Hello and welcome to Leros Farm. So today we'll be talking about um, fries, fingerlings, juvenile, is standing position. We are trying to review a video that was sent to me by someone asking me what's the cause of this and you know I have done videos before about standing position but this was uh, a practical something that happened in someone's farm and I was sent the video. I've actually posted it on Facebook and you know I had a lot of people say a lot of things even till today people are still talking and I've posted that video for some time. So I decided that you know what let me bring it here be able to explain to you what exactly leads to this and what exactly is the cause of this stick around to the end of this video to understand everything about this particular situation and know how to avert it then if you are having any problem in your farm all you need to do is do a simple video do the video where you are feeding your fishes and then you know send it to me let me see the problem that you are having and i will solve it for you free of charge Remember, next farm, let us farm, we don't charge you for anything. I'm not having any WhatsApp group or anything like that. So I'm not going to call you to ask you to send me money to do any something for you. So I'll be right back to discuss this. Welcome back. So from the video you just watched now, you can see that that's a concrete pond. And those fishes, they are more of um, fingerlings, juvenile, that's the size range. So depending on what you call it, it could be called juvenile, it could be called fingerlings, because I don't know what it was sold for. And I don't like this issue. Some people always tell me, oh, is this size juvenile, is this size fingerling? I have said it time with that number. What affects the size of fishes that you buy is the price you price it. So if somebody says, I have juvenile, go and see it. If it's that small, it's fingerlings. Well, if it's not that small, it's juvenile. Then the prices actually determine. If somebody is selling a fish for 65 bucks and you are pricing it 50 bucks, it's going to give you the one of 50 bucks, which will be fingerling. You know, so let's not. Some people will say, Why? <laughs> You that is asking the price to be what it's not supposed to be, why? So, I mean, I don't really want us to start talking about problem now. So, let's just go into this detail of why it happened and um, how do we solve this situation. First of all, in this pond, you see that it's a concrete pond. Now, treatment of concrete pond before you stock is a simple treatment. The treatment is... Um, you normally wash your pond with hypo wash the pond with hypo and detergent you scrub it you can use sponge but scrub it um i have always said it please don't after washing the pond don't soak anything even before washing please don't soak anything the reason why i say this is so that you'll be able to understand where an issue starts when you soak these things in the pond there are tendencies there are things microbial uh, components of those things that may be uh, deposited for you in the pond and when this is when this happens and you stock a fish the unfortunate thing is that the fishes will be able will pick up these things and then we start having issues and when this issue starts you won't actually know where the problem is coming from now i'm not saying that this particular pond have those things but i'm saying it that you know when you are stocking you know try and avoid these things so that the reason is very simple when you have a presentation of an issue, you'll be able to like uh, write down possible causes of this issue and eliminate those ones that are not included in that issue by way of you know those things that you did not do and the things that you do you did. So you'll be able to you know eliminate all the possible outcomes that will come out from those ones. That's why I just explained this now. Now from this particular stocking, um like I said, I mentioned about the treatment of the pond, just to know that, oh, if the pond was actually treated this way, that will be eliminated. Now, the sure possible problem of this pond issue again could be how many is involved in this pond. Even though the fishes are small, how many did you stock in this pond? And how many is supposed to be the pond capacity? This could actually make a way for these situations to happen. Now, if you are able to solve the situation of knowing how many you stock and what is the proper stocking density, you know that this issue will be out. Now, 
Some people will argue that the fishes are small, so it cannot be the number, but you are wrong. If a pond, example, is supposed to take 100 and you stock 200 in that pond because the fishes are small, even in some cases they will stock up to 500 because the fishes are small. The problem is that whatever the fishes are releasing as waste develop ammonia concentration in the water which is toxic to the fishes whenever you see fishes standing up in, like this in the pond before eating what they're just telling you is that that environment that environment is a kind of choking to them that means that they are not comfortable staying in the water so what they do is that they raise their head up for when they raise their head up to be able to get oxygen from above so that's why you see them in that position because they cannot lie down and get the oxygen without getting the water in so that's why they flip up raise their room up to get oxygen from above they are telling you that hey our water level with our water uh, components we don't like it so that's why you see them like this and this issue would only happen before feeding if it is after feeding you don't have any problem but once you see this issue before feeding you get to your pond in the morning before feeding, you see this or um, you want to feed in the afternoon, the evening time, and you get there and they are like this. Uh, it's not supposed to be. But if like one or two, they are like this. You just ignore it. But when you see a barrage of fishes doing like this, it's not okay. Because the fishes are telling you that, look, we are not okay with the situation that we are seeing ourselves. So they are trying to get oxygen. And what is going to cause low oxygen in water? First of all, you start looking at your stocking density. Because once you overstock and they have too much of waste in the pond, it increases the ammonia concentration of that pond and will make them to like, hey, we don't have much oxygen. That's another one. Then another thing that can lead to this situation is water pH. So if the pH level is bad, the fishes definitely will not have enough oxygen in the water. So that's why you see them that they are like that. Like I, I said, one of the first easiest tests for you to do about water pH is take from that same water, put it in a cup or in a bowl and put detergent, shake it. If the detergent doesn't move, man, your water they very bad. But sometimes when you do it, the detergent will still foam. So if that foam, I would advise you to get a water tester. It could be that the thing is not that too much, but it's already bad. So that's why you see the water foam, but not foam that good. So get a water pH tester and test the pH level of the pond and whatever the reading is. Let me see it. And even I have a video here on YouTube where I talked about your pH level in the water. I gave all the explanations what you're supposed to have at the water pH and give you a guide. But then... For some reasons, you can also send it to me. When I look at the testing result, I will give you an example. I will tell you what it's supposed to be. But know that when you are at 6.5, you are good to go. So the pH level of that pond could be another deciding factor when this happens. Now, for me, the first thing I will do is when I get to my pond in the morning and I see this situation, first thing I will do is I will change my water. Now, there are instances that you change your water, the water that comes in, is okay and the fishes go their normal way then you know that this is not a problem but you change the water the fishes are okay and in the next 30 minutes they are not okay again it means that your water source is bad but immediately you change it they were okay that time because they felt that new water is coming but when they are now settled in it shows that man nothing has changed so they become another problem then again like i said if you overstock and you change water the fishes will be good for like one hour two hours you see them messed up again that means you have overstocked your pond so that's why immediately the waste keep gathering again this ammonia concentration goes high immediately then some people have this funny idea they say oh yeah, I understand that it may be that I stock too much fish. So that's why I'm changing the water every day. So what happens is that you change the water this morning. Then by the time you come back uh, in the evening, there are some of them are trying to do like this. The next day in the morning, you change water again. They are okay in the evening. If you keep on doing that cycle, what is happening is that you are inducing stress on your fishes. And like I always say, the problem about fishes is that they will not tell you that what you are doing to them is bad. No, they wait for the result. So at the time you are going to see the result from the fishes, you are going to see that some of them will have very poor growth, very stunted growth because you have started inducing stress from them. And then you sell and you make loss. I start wondering oh, what could have gone wrong. I did everything I was supposed to do. Because this is the language I always hear people tell me, oh, I did everything you say we should be doing. 
I made sure I fed very well. I made sure I changed water. I made sure I bought uh, shooters. You know, people will be mentioning all these things and I will be laughing. But they always miss one point. And that point could be the turning point that has made them to have that bad result. Like I'm always saying it now, try and try and try and try and try to understand some of these points. It's not, you know, you know, you do nine and leave one. That one could, you know, undermine everything that you are doing. And these things are very easy points. There is no point to absolutely change the water in your bone every day. So these things I said now, they are the likable possibilities that have made these catfishes to go bad. But then again, I advised the owner on what to do and their fishes, I think they are okay now because I didn't get any other negative complaint from the owner. But these things are things that we don't need to joke with them because they actually affect the productivity from our catfish fund then is there anything i have said now that you don't understand remember if you're having any problem in your farm just do a two to three minutes video and send to me those do video and send to me i will look at this thing and i'll be able to help you solve your problem free of charge so until i come your way next time my name is emery from well over of Farm. keep farming see off life